Hi, I'm uh, Doug Lynch. I'm a uh, scientist in the research and development group at Lycor Biosciences. And this video will show how to install the LI6100A fluorometer onto the uh, LI6800 sensor head. And for this task, we'll just need the fluorometer, um, whichever apertures you're going to install, which I'll, uh, I'll talk about here in a minute. Um, you'll need the number two Phillips screwdriver, if the skid plate is on like it is here, you'll need a smaller number one screwdriver and sometimes tweezers can be helpful to, to grab screws. Okay, so we're going to start by discussing the two aperture sizes available for the, the 6100A fluorometer. Uh, installed currently is the larger aperture, which is six square centimeters of leaf area. Um, if you'll be working with smaller leaves, you may want to use the smaller aperture, which looks like this, which is two square centimeters. And uh, both the top and the bottom need to be replaced uh, when, when switching between apertures. So we'll go ahead and install these apertures to, to demonstrate that. And I like to re first remove the thermocouple, which can be sort of gently pulled out from the bottom, being careful not to bang it on the side of the walls and put the thermocouple to the side and then we will remove the apertures you can see I'll show demonstrate on this one there's a notch here that has to go in a specific location and there's a little bit of uh, room here to, to be able to grab to remove the aperture once it's installed uh, it is held in place by this o-ring underneath so I like to use tweezers a finger is just fine um, to get underneath that notch and then it will pop right up and slide right off. And that's how the aperture is removed. And then, like I said, a finger is just fine. You just wanna be careful, especially on the top. You don't want your finger or any objects to hit any of the optical components or the glass above. You can get underneath the aperture and pull it right off. Now those apertures can be put to the side. Uh, obviously keep these safe so they don't get lost for when you do want the other size. Now, to install it, there's only one way, it is keyed, it can only be installed in one direction, and there's a small notch on the chamber right here where my tweezers are pointing that has to align with that same negative notch on the aperture itself. And that is the only way it will properly install. So you need to make sure that is lined up, and then you just sort of push evenly down and you'll see that O-ring go into place. And then you'll know it's installed properly when that notch lines up right there. The notch is on the other side of the top and it's the same, uh, same piece. So it's easier often to put it upside down. And again, lining up those two. And this is why it's easier to do it before you install the chamber if you can. should pop into place like that. Okay, now that we've got the apertures installed that we want on our chamber, we're gonna go ahead and install the chamber on our sensor head. And uh, the first thing we need to do is remove the old chamber. Um, if the skid plate is, is down here, um, we'll need to remove it because the quantum sensor, the external quantum sensor, as well as leaf thermocouples are plugged in uh, underneath that. And those are two screws here, and this is why you need the, uh, the smaller screwdriver. So I'll just pop that out and make sure we don't lose those screws so they can stay there. And now you see you can unplug your quantum sensor and your leaf thermocouples. And if I had a three by three light source on this chamber, um, it would have plugged in underneath here as well. So now to remove this chamber, there are four screws and all of them use this same screwdriver. There's one, two on the springs, the top of the springs, and then three and four are the Phillips screw in the front here. So it's only this one screw. If you see a hex screw, that means you don't need to touch it. So let's go ahead and remove these two. And I often leave the chamber in the parked position. So it just kind of relieves some tension. There's one. And two screws. 
And now these, these are loose. And then these screws are captured with the chamber. So you will not uh, remove them completely. You want to leave them with the chamber so that when you go to put this chamber on again, the screws will already be with it. So you just need to loosen them enough so that the chamber detaches. And you can see, I moved that one a little too far. I'm going to back this one in a bit. And now it is captured there and will stay with this chamber. Now, when installing the fluorometer, there's a couple things to note just to make the install go more smoothly. One is to deal with the power cable for the fluorometer. And um, so you want to run it. Let me turn this around actually and show you this way because it will run underneath this arm here. And then it can go and get clipped in to this uh, port in the back and that holds the cable in place. The other important thing to keep in mind, or try to, is to have the spring come, when you, when you push this back, have this spring be up. If this spring had been rotated down, um, I would have had to take it off and rotate it. But this way just makes, saves you a step of having to do that. And once I get it in place, I will go ahead and first tighten these two screws. And you don't want to go all the way tight on one side. You want to just do it mostly tight and then do the other side. And kind of work your way back and forth a few times. And it does not need to be more than hand tightened. It is O-ring sealed. So those, those two screws are done. And now it's the two remaining screws in the springs which again do not, do not need to be egregiously tightened. One more screw here. And then the next step will be to put my thermocouple back in that I'd removed earlier. So I'll flip this upside down and I'm taking the thermocouple out. So I'll go ahead and put it back in the chamber. Yours may already be installed. And then you can plug in your quantum sensor and your thermocouple with the fluorometer. There won't necessarily be a light source here because it plugs in to the console. And then you can put this plate back on you want to make sure not to pinch any of these wires, so kind of push them to the middle, which is where they're designed to be. And again, these two screws, I've only got one, but the second screw would have been there. And now you would run this cable through the, this can be run through the cable bundle uh, with the other head cable, just to make it convenient to carry around. And this, uh, this end gets plugged into the sensor two port on the, uh, on the console. Um, so it plugs in just like the sensor head plugs into your console. There's a red dot on here to, to help you uh, ensure good alignment. Um, and you'll want to just make sure everything seems tight and you have a good seal. And it can go through all three open, park, and closed positions. And then uh, you should be ready to go. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, if you have further questions, there are plenty of other uh, additional resources on our website, or you can feel free to contact us or your local distributor.